Well, this is our last day of exploring Mark together, and I trust that you've seen how easy it can be to seek Jesus every day. And I pray that the Holy Spirit has opened the eyes of your heart to His identity, mission, and call in your life. You know, the final six chapters of Mark's Gospel take place in and around Jerusalem and record Jesus' final week. And though he's hailed as Israel's king in chapter 11, events throughout the week cascade him quickly toward the cross. In chapter 13, Jesus issues a, a prophetic warning concerning the destruction of Jerusalem and the signs that will accompany his second coming. It's not surprising then that chapter 14 begins with a deliberate plot by the chief priests and scribes to kill him. They love their temple and they love their religious traditions. However, one event in particular proved to be too much for one of Jesus' own disciples. When Judas Iscariot witnessed a woman's sacrificial act of worship by anointing Jesus with a very expensive flask of perfume, he began seeking an opportunity to betray Jesus because he loved money more than anything. In a span of 24 hours, Jesus is betrayed, arrested, abandoned, denied, slandered, beaten, mocked, and eventually crucified. And the people were right. Jesus is the King of Israel. But instead of coming to reign, He came to die for the sins of the people. You know, many hearts were hardened to Jesus' identity on that day. And yet there were some whose hearts were open to all that He is and the mission that He came to fulfill. For example, when seeing how Jesus uh, cried out and breathed his last, one of the Roman centurions overseeing the crucifixion realized this, that truly this man was the Son of God. Even a respected member of the Jewish council, a man by the name of Joseph from Arimathea, he came and asked the Roman governor for the body of Jesus. And so he took the body, wrapped him in a linen shroud, and then buried Jesus' body in a tomb. And yet, I don't think anyone seriously anticipated what Jesus had so clearly predicted, that on Sunday morning, the third day, He would rise, just as He said. Interestingly, verses 9 through 20 of chapter 16 appear to be an added ending, something tagged on much later to Mark's original manuscript. And most translations contain them in brackets for this very reason. We may wonder why this added ending. Perhaps it's because Mark originally ended his gospel uh, with an angel announcing Jesus' resurrection to a group of women who'd come to anoint his body after burial. And they didn't find him there, but were instructed to tell his disciples to go meet him in Galilee where their ministry first began. And Mark says this, And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That's how Mark ends. But why? It seems pretty abrupt, doesn't it? Well, I believe it's because Mark wants us to make our own determination. He wants us to decide, based on his writing, who is Jesus? Why did he come? And what does he require of people like you and like me? If he is the Son of God and died for our sins, then will we follow Him as the risen Savior and reigning King? You know, exploring uh, the gospel according to Mark is really an invitation, an invitation to take the next steps with Jesus. If anyone would come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. What are your next steps going to be? You know, we'd love to help you in your journey. So join us on Sunday for our live stream, Easter Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. as we continue seeking Jesus together.